Hello everybody, just thought I'd give you a really quick tour of Rusty Iron Van's um, Stealth Camper RV build, emergency camper build. This build um, was slated to take maybe one or two days to build as an emergency stealth camper vehicle. Meant for um, emergency shelter if you should lose your home or need a place where you can live out of your vehicle. Now, it is about 90% done, but I'm getting ready to tear it back apart to rebuild Little Blue 3 in another van. This van build that you're looking at is a minivan. It is a Chrysler 2001 Voyager, which is a very small van. It's essentially the same van as the Dodge Caravan. Not the Grand Caravan, but the Caravan. So it's a very small van, and um, I was able to fit almost everything inside this van that I could fit inside a Little Blue 2, which is based upon a 2003 Dodge Grand Caravan. But um, here then is a tour of this van. As you can see, it has a full-size, well, twin-size bed sleeping arrangement for one, possibly two people. But I would say more comfortable would be one person. It also has drawers up top. You can have four drawers here for clothing and whatnot that you need. Plus a drawer here that can be used for knickknacks. I do temporarily have set up a um, thermometer and calendar. On the bottom here, there's actually plenty of storage. There is six more drawers here that can be used. Um, what you put in here is up to you, but what I would put back here is stuff that I don't have to access very often. Because once the door is shut, it's kind of hard to access this, although you could potentially pull things back. Um, but I would plan on accessing stuff here when you're parked and you need to pull it out. There is also additional storage here that can be used for like water, tools, supplies, and whatnot. And a little bit more storage on this side. In addition to storage above the drawer here and behind the whole unit. For the curtains, I simply use the real curtain um, metal beams that they sell, you know, the U ones at Walmart. But I straightened out the end and then just screwed it in as you can see here. And for the actual curtains themselves, I bought real curtains from Walmart. These are the Solar Eclipse curtains, which are designed to block heat. And they're super thick. They have two sides. I put the black side out to help uh, make the vehicle more stealth. So when you're looking from outside, what you see is black. And um, my advice for getting these uh, curtains is they sell several sizes. I think the, I don't know if it's 42 inches and one is like 56 and one is like 84. I would go ahead and purchase the 84 inch one and then cut it in half. See how the bottom is cut here? Because then you can use each half as a curtain. Because it has these little hole thingies where you can slide it on this beam. Um, it has it on the top and the bottom. Although the bottom one is like thinner, like that small, instead of um, the whole length here. But that means from one curtain you can get two. Those curtains run about, I think, between 9 to 12 or $13 each for each panel. For the drawers themselves, I just picked up these... Um, I don't know if they're stir light, but they're stackable drawers. See, they slide out. The reason they look red is I painted them. <laughs> uh, they do need a touch-up paint job. I don't really recommend painting them because you can see they scratch and whatnot. So it would be better to use like contact paper. Or nowadays, they actually sell the drawers with different colors. At least the um, the outer frame is in different colors. So you can kind of decorate the van the way you want. For the base of the bed, I essentially just have wood here on this side and this side. And it was measured to the height of this console panel here. That was so that I could lay out this drawer and go straight across. You can see I have an empty drawer here. But it goes straight across so that you can have these drawers sticking out here. And um, you can have all the storage underneath. For the bed platform, I basically just have a piece of wood that goes across right here. But I didn't use one, I used three. I used them in segments, so one is here, one is there, and one is in the front. And the reason for that is so that you can open things up. You know, like you can pick this up 
and you can slide this out so you can see the top nothing's really bolted down it just slid in and locks into place but underneath here you're gonna see a whole bunch more storage you can see all that storage space under here that can be used to store linen clothes and other items well, we're back here. I thought I would go ahead and point out something that I think is kind of important. For safety, I've mounted a um, carbon monoxide detector because you are living in a vehicle and there's a chance for uh, carbon monoxide to get in, whether it's from your own vehicle when it's running or from a vehicle that's parked next to you. This detector will detect when the level of carbon monoxide is um, too high and beep off to give you a warning to get out open up your windows, get some circulation going. Um, being in your vehicle all the time like this, I think it's kind of critical to have a, a safety um, device like that installed. We are now looking at the side of the vehicle and you can see several features here. I don't have a drawer put in here yet right now, but there's a drawer that goes there so you can put things, medicine and whatever you need up there. These are of course our four drawer units. And in addition, there's um, four drawer, I mean, two more drawers under here, which you can put knickknacks and whatever you need in there. And there was a little gap here, so I put like a little box for um, tackle for fishing. And you still have storage here in this crack right here in between. So lots and lots of storage. In addition, underneath, I did not finish the full build by cutting this piece off so that you could have access here to pull things in and out. I didn't do that because I'm going to be using this back inside Little Blue 2, which is another build. So I'm going to leave the wood intact for now. But you can see the bedding. It's just simply wood underneath here to make the panels that go across. And I simply got this mattress, this foam type mattress from Walmart. It was like $56 for a twin. I think that's what this was right here. In the next build, I think I may go with a full size if it'll fit. We're going to try that with Little Blue 3. Um, this thing flips up if you need to, but you can see that this slides out. Kind of hard to do it one-handed here, but when I slide it out, you have access to all the storage underneath. So you get all that space down there. You can put whatever you need to, including an emergency toilet if you need to. Although you'd probably want to just leave it right here in this spot. If you were using a small little emergency toilet, which we'll talk about in a future video. But down here, I'm probably going to, you know, if I was using it, I would store things like clothes, um, you know, winter clothes or whatever, and items that are a little too big. You'll see that I do have the um, fold-down seat right here, which we'll talk about in a moment. We are at the other side looking at the um, bedding system right now, the sub-bedding system. See the wood here I've cut at angles and stuff? That's so that the seat would fold up. But reality is if I were actually going to configure this for living in, like um, to make it easily accessible, I would cut the side right here. So it would be even. Same with the other side. Then you don't need this diagonal right here. That gives you room here to stick your hand in and pull things in and out. Um, this seat right here is a foldable seat. And I opted to keep this seat here instead of making the console, the bed frame, come all the way out with wood. For the simple fact that this van still needs to function as a passenger vehicle. By leaving this middle seat in, which folds, and using it as the base for the bed there, I'm able to flip it up by like hitting the switch right here. Pull, I don't know, let me do it here. It's going to take two hands to do this. Once I pull on this lever right here, I'm able to flip the seat up. And you can see now the van is actually functional as a passenger van that can carry up to four adults. This allows me to um, get my children on the weekends for visitation. And we can actually ride around in the van as if it was a normal van. And use it to even go grocery shopping and whatnot. There is still some space here for storage, for things like groceries along the front here, the side right there. And if I need it, you know, there is space underneath the, um, the bedding system. And you could stack some loose items up here with the bed on where it is by, you know, folding the mattress down. So this design offers a lot of versatility for those of you who need weekenders, like to take a quick camping trip and whatnot. But also need the vehicle to function as a regular van to carry passengers. You notice I have some electrical systems set up here, including a rice cooker. Uh, let's take a moment now to explain this system for those of you who aren't familiar with Little Blue 2, Rusty Iron Van, and my whole cooking efforts. 
what you're looking at is a 300 watt rice cooker you can get a similar unit from walmart i do have links um on the or will have links on this video as well as on the um, stealthvan.com website later i haven't worked on that right now but if you're interested in stuff like this there's a link that uh, links to various components that you can purchase from Amazon that will allow you to build a similar system from the inverter to the rice cooker and whatnot. But there's a 300 watt, um, 120 volt rice cooker. And the reason I went with this instead of a 12 volt device that would plug directly into the vehicle system is for versatility. By using 120 volts, I can take this into a house and use it. Um, when I'm working somewhere, I can just plug it into an outlet. Or if I'm staying in a hotel, I can just take it in and use it to cook with by plugging into a wall outlet. So I just simply plug this into a power inverter here. And for those of you who aren't familiar with power inverters or converters, what they do is take, um, they can take like uh, 12 volts from the vehicle and convert it to 120. Or if in Euro you're in Europe or somewhere else, it requires 200 and 40 volts or 220 volts the power inverters there will convert it to that that allows you to run common household appliances off your vehicle but to power that you need to hook this inverter up to a 12 volt battery source the inverter that i have here is a 750 watt inverter and what i've done is i've created a house battery system by purchasing a 114 amp hour um, 12 volt battery that I have under here. I don't know if I can take this out to show you, but you can see that's a 12 volt battery from Walmart. Um, it is um, an RV battery, so it's designed specifically for deep cycle or um, pulling, you know, to be used in this kind of application where you have it in an RV or a boat or whatever, and you can use it to um, draw power from. It's designed to be have the power drawn, you know, and then redrawn every day after you charge it back up unlike a vehicle battery which is designed for like really high draw at the beginning to start up the vehicle but not designed to drain down like really low this one's designed to do that to, to be used every day to drain down and then um, charge back up every day I'm not going to explain the whole hookup of the the battery inverter system in this video because I've done it in a previous video so if you're interested in that make sure you look at the um, build for rusty iron vans um, inverter installation system for the cooking system but anyhow what it does is it allows you to connect this battery 12 volts up to this device and it becomes 120 volts so right now you can see um, the battery is um, not using any watts right now it has 12.1 volts in it which means it needs to be charged fully charged batteries usually show 12.8 so this one needs to be charged up and right now there's no draw on it so I'm not running any electrical devices I don't know if you remember, I mentioned that the rice cooker is 300 watts. This thing will go up to 750 watts, so it's got more than enough power to run the rice cooker. What you want to look at is the number of watts that the device needs, and then make sure your inverter can generate that much power. This here is a, a multi-plug outlet for 12 volts with a USB charger, and I can plug that into this unit right here, which always has power from the what I call the house battery, and it allows me to run stuff like fans. These fans are actually 12 volt units, so they run directly off the 12 volt battery from the house battery or the vehicle battery. But in this case, I have it on the house battery so I don't drain the vehicle battery. That way my car will always start, it's like two battery systems. I have two, two fans in here to stay cool because we are in Florida and I can turn one on or both on. These fans use only like 0 .08 watts, but you know, I just round it off to like um, one watt. And what that means is in, is in one hour, this device will use up one whole watt. Um, and then like my battery is rated at like about 114 amp hours. I'll round it down to maybe about 100 amp hours. That means I could run um, up to 100 amp hours, 100 watts of electricity all, you know, for 100 hours. But the problem is then it would drain down to zero. You can't really do that. You really shouldn't let the battery drain down past um, maybe 30 percent, you know, 30 to 40 percent. I'm not exactly sure the number, but I would probably keep it at least at 70 percent charged. That means on a 100 amp hour battery, I can use up about 30 amps without it, you know, damaging the battery itself. So I could run this, this fan for like 30 hours. And if I run two of them, because they each take up one watt, 
I could run them for 15 hours before I need to recharge the system. Uh, the reason you can't get the full amp hours of the batteries is because when you're converting it or um, using an inverter, there's a lot of loss. There's some power loss. So you should always scale up like, uh, or scale down in this case um, for the battery. It's rated at 114. I just round it down to 100. Uh, this this thing, the inverter, will cause it to lose some of the battery power just converting from 12 volts to 120 volts. Now you might be wondering how I charge this battery up. Well, you could charge it up with a solar panel, but because this is a stealth vehicle, and I don't really park off-grid in the woods somewhere, you know, um, that often I'm usually doing stealth urban camping. It's important that the vehicle look as normal as possible. As you can see, the vehicle does not look anything like a camper. It looks like a regular minivan on the outside. And um, as a result, I charge the system by using the vehicle's alternator and battery, you know, current battery system. So what I did was I ran a wire here. You can see the wire comes here and goes into the battery system, okay, to charge this particular battery, which then runs the inverter. And I have the wire coming through here, and I have a little switch, which I use the house switch. Uh, a lot of people say you should use a 12-volt um, um, switch designed specifically for an application like this. My experience with the 12-volt switches wasn't too good. It kept melting and whatnot. So I switched over to a 120-volt um, house switch, and I know people say it's kind of dangerous to do that, but I've been doing it, and it, it's been working fine. You know, it, it worked fine in a little blue for over a year, whereas I went through three other switches using the 12-volt um, DC switches. Anyhow, that wire comes to here, and then from there, I run it. I run it underneath here, out through here. I didn't drill holes and stuff because this is a very quick emergency build, and I just ran the wire here. This is the positive wire. Down to here to a fuse, an inline fuse that I put in. So I have a fuse right here um, in case there's like a short or something. So the fuse will, will break the circuit breaker and that will disconnect the two batteries. And the reason I did that is so that it would hook up to this 12 volt, which is a vehicle battery that charges, you know, like a normal vehicle. When you drive your car and have the, um, you have the alternator here spinning, it'll generate electricity to charge your starter battery. And your the starter battery is connected to the house battery through this cable right here that we pulled back here. And so what happens is the alternator charges this battery as well as the house battery when it's running. So, but that only happens if I switch the, the system on. Like when I turn the switch on, I connect the two batteries. Right now it's disconnected. Now, if you wanted to play it a little bit safer, instead of putting in a battery and you wanted the system to be automated, you would put in what's called a battery isolator. And what that is, is like an automatic switch. So you would probably mount your isolator somewhere here under the hood, okay? Or maybe you could even do it underneath, you know, inside the vehicle itself, but probably safest to put it here under the hood. And what that would do is when the alternator's running, it'll charge up both this battery and the house battery but when the alternator is shut off which means when your engine is shut off it disconnects automatically it disconnects the house battery so there's no way for you to drain the house battery from uh, I mean the vehicle battery when you're using up the house battery whereas with my system the two are connected when you have the switch turned on so if you forget to turn that switch off and you run down the house battery it'll start to pull down power from this vehicle battery and you'll run out of power here and then you might not be able to start. So that is pretty much the system in a nutshell and would allow you to basically live in it, you can sleep in it, and you can even cook in it using the inverter cooking system which was explained in other videos. And um, I want to thank you for joining me and I hope you found this video informative and helpful. Till next time everybody, have a great day.